Today, we're going to look at how it is possible to follow Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And again in John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. It seems like a simple thing to say, follow me. But is it really possible to follow Jesus and do what Jesus has done? Is it really possible to be Jesus and be exactly like Jesus? For Jesus himself has said that we shall do greater things. And as we walk through our life, we find that not everything is correlating to what the Lord has said. What he said we can do, we find ourselves not able to. So we make excuses. We say, after all, was he not God? Was he not born sinless? We are humans after all, and we fall in sin, and the sin, you know, it may be causing all these problems. How is following Jesus possible? Will you relegate that to some, you know, things that people with more dedication or consecration can do? But no. Let me tell you, my brother and my sister, it is possible to follow Jesus and to do exactly what we did. Not because of anything that we are, but because of what He did. We need to understand this through scriptures. In Hosea 4 6, the Bible clearly states that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Think about it. How many things have been taken away from us because we do not know. Our spiritual inheritance, our walk in Christ, the victory we have, sometimes we do not experience because we do not know. So we're going to take some time out and study this. I am going to go through a few scriptures. I would like you to take your Bibles and follow me as I go through them. Hallelujah. In John 14, 12, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say unto you, he, believe, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And before Jesus went to his Father, he said, He's sending us a comforter, the Holy Spirit. With that in mind, let us turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. It says, He, that is Jesus, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant coming in the likeness of men. Jesus made himself of no reputation. This word no reputation. If you go to the root, it means to make empty, to abase, to neutralize, to falsify, to make of none effect, void and in vain. To make something in vain, it's like me telling you, I, I went to the shop, uh, I walked two kilometers to the shop, but it was in vain because the shop was closed. Do you understand? Jesus made him in a, himself, in a sense, useless. That's a strong word, but that is what the Bible says. He says he emptied himself. Of what did he empty himself of and why? That is the key. We need to understand this. The Bible says we perish because we do not know. First of all, if Jesus had come on earth without emptying himself, he would not have the right to tell us to follow him. I will give you an example. Suppose Jesus is standing in front of me and says, John, come walk with me. I say, yes, Lord, I'll be glad to. I put away everything. You are my king. I will follow you. And we are walking along and we come to one of the cliffs in, on the side of one of the mountains in Uti. And Jesus from there takes a mighty leap and flies across to the next mountain. And he lands on the other side and tells me, follow me. 
Do you think I can do that? In my human sense, absolutely not. I can just watch and observe how Jesus did that. But there is a story in the Bible where Jesus walks in water and Peter says, I want to do the same thing. And he was able to do that. How he did this is a key to our victory. We're going to study this. Hallelujah. First of all, what did Jesus empty himself of? He emptied himself of his equality with God. Don't get me wrong. Jesus was God on earth. But when he came to earth, he emptied himself of his equal status with God. Let us go to John chapter 14, verse 28. Jesus says, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. For his Father to be greater than him, he has to be lower than Father. So he became lower than what he used to be. He emptied himself of equality with God. We read the same thing in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. We read the scripture earlier. He says, Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God or equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. So one, we understand that Jesus emptied himself of his equality with God. He became man. The second thing is that he got rid of his godly body, his spiritual body that he had. The body that he had before need not die. It, wouldn't, it, it wasn't perishable. It was a spirit body. Sure, it took form and came to earth in Old Testament times, but that is not the body that Jesus the word that became flesh had. Let us look at Galatians 4.4. 4. It says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under law. That means Jesus was born as you and I are born. When He was a baby, if you slapped Him, He would cry because there was no difference between that baby and another baby. This is very important to understand for our victory in Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 3 says, For what the law could not do in, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, according to sin. And He condemned sin in the flesh. He did what he did to make himself equal to us so he can say, follow me. Let us continue. The third thing he did was he rid himself or emptied himself or made void his immortality. You cannot kill God, but Jesus died. He was not killed. He chose his death. And he gave up the spirit on the cross and his body died. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15.3 Let us look at 1 Corinthians 15.3 It says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received. As Paul is saying, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. So according to scriptures, it is very clear that Christ died. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered once for us, for the sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Now listen carefully. Being put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. Hallelujah. Being put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. The fourth thing that Jesus emptied himself of 
was the glory that he had with his father before the world was. This is in John 17, 5. Jesus says, and now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. When is Jesus reading this? Hallelujah. And in Matthew 16, 27, it says, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he will reward each according to his works. So we understand that Jesus had a glory which he put away, and now he's asking his Father for that, and he knows he will receive that, and we now know that he has received. So the fourth thing that he put away was the glory he had with the Father before the world was. He emptied himself of all glory, all reputation. Many times when I travel, I look at what the Lord has done himself, how glorious. All that glory, Jesus emptied himself of all became a new and new. And the fifth thing that he emptied himself of was his authority. His authority in heaven and in earth. But this was given back to him in resurrection. But when he was on earth, walking as Jesus before the crucifixion, he had emptied himself of all authority that he had as God. This is also very keen understanding how we can get out of it. Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. If you look at when Jesus is saying it in the Bible, it is after his resurrection. So, 1 Peter 3.22 says, Jesus who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Understand my brothers and sisters, when Jesus walked in the flesh on earth, he did not have his authority that he had before, or which he has now. He made himself just like you and me. There is a movie that came out called Avatar. This word is very, very, very common to us Indians because we understand what it means. Jesus was not an avatar of God. In other words, Jesus did not come and was not born with godly powers. He was not a super baby with the ability to lift mountains or fly around or do great things. He was just a normal baby. Jesus emptied himself and took upon himself the form of a man. Hallelujah. We need to understand this. This is the key to our victory. I keep saying that, but we will come to that in the end. And I want to make it known to you. But before that, I want to make sure that you understand this is not me, John, preaching my message, but I'm illustrating and showing you what the Bible says. Hallelujah. We need to understand. My people perish because they do not know. Let us not be of the people who perish. Let us go from strength unto strength and from glory to glory. Let us walk in the victory that Jesus has given us, or that we need to know what He has given us and what He has done for us. Hallelujah. The sixth thing, I covered it a little bit a little earlier. He, that is Jesus, emptied Himself of His divine attributes and outward powers He had with His Father from eternity. Jesus was not born with superpowers. He was born a normal baby. Any power that Jesus had, any divine attribute or any result of being God stopped at the moment of conception in Mary's womb. Jesus was born of a virgin. The Bible says the Holy Spirit overcame or overshadowed Mary. The moment of that conception, that seed, that baby was just as human as you and I are, but sinless. Yes, Jesus was born sinless, 
But the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that we are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It says, For God made Jesus who knew no sin became, become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And again in 1 John 1.9, it says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It says from all unrighteousness. So the fact that Jesus was born sinless is no excuse for us to say, well, Jesus is on a higher ground or a different ground. No, He became man just like you and I are. We are looking at Point six of what Jesus, em Jesus emptied himself of. We understood that he emptied himself of his divine attributes or his outwardly powers that he had as God. Meaning, when Jesus was born on earth, he had no godly powers with him. He could do nothing that God could do. Until, and this is the key, my brothers and my sisters, again, until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We read in Acts 10.38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, and God was with him. And if you read in John 2.11, it says, The beginning of miracles or the signs that, that Jesus did was in Cana of Galilee, where he manifested his glory. And this is after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and my sisters. So what does it mean to us? We understood that Jesus was not an avatar with special powers. That all the powers he had as God ended at conception. He was fully man. He had no godly powers until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. In other words, Jesus did not walk on that water with his own ability. Jesus did not raise the dead in his own ability. He did not heal the sick in his own ability, but by the power of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit is available for you and for me, but for the ask. Hallelujah. Jesus made himself nothing emptied himself of all godly powers. He did not merely appear to be human in a way that angels sometimes appear to be human without becoming actually human. But he became man, flesh and blood, but was filled with the Holy Ghost and then went about doing good. Hallelujah. He had no power to do miracles until he received the Holy Spirit in all fullness. And you know what? He went through everything you and I did. He's been through all our problems, all our miseries. He understands. Jesus understands. Hebrews 4, 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. This means that Jesus was man. He went through everything we went through. He understands us. We serve a living, loving God who understands us, who became man for us and told us to follow him so that we could follow him into the victory. That is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He showed us the way and he said, follow me. He could never do that if he didn't give us the equipment or the ability or the anointing to follow him. We have everything Jesus has. That is why he said in John 14, 12 again, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do he will also do, and greater works that he will do because I go to my Father. Jesus emptied himself of all his power and glory, became just like you and me, but without sin, showed us what we can do with the power of the Holy Ghost so that we can do the same and more. My brothers and my sisters, this is the key. Those who are led 
by the Spirit of the living God are the sons of God. Hallelujah. This is the key. Jesus who was God before was still God when he was on earth. He still loved God. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. But the Bible says in the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14 of chapter 1 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And this flesh, the same flesh that you and I have, is Jesus. He emptied himself of all powers. Was not a God child per se with any superpowers. He became man with only what man had so that he could tell man to follow him. And to follow him and to get to heaven, he has given us the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we cannot live a victorious life in Christ Jesus without Thank you.